I had two topics yesterday morning for a warm-up video. And I was like really busy working on something um, for most of the day yesterday. So I was like, I should write them down. And then I was like, nah, I'll totally remember them. And now, you know what? Didn't remember. Uh, but I can talk about uh, something that I'm sort of thinking about more as I bring uh, Intertwingler into the home stretch, and that is uh, information resources. So, we all know what like a file is, and you can sort of say that a file is a relation between an identifier and a blob, you know, a data segment. And if you want, you know, you can have symlinks in there, so like, you know, ID to whatever, um, you know, this could be a, you know, a dash line to indicate that it's a symbolic link or even a hard link. It doesn't really matter in this context. But the idea is, is you have this identifier mapped to a single piece of information. Now, an information resource is a more abstract thing than this. Uh, a resource is actually a sort of many-to-many -many relations between IDs. We can have like a bunch of them here. One, two, three. And then you can have, oops. So an information resource actually yokes together at least one identifier to at least one representation. And in HTTP, uh, you've got all sorts of verbs too. So you actually have a tuple and then you've got like headers for metadata. So you've got like a tuple, which is method, uh, headers, And then uh, method, headers, payload. And then representation, oops. And so what's on the right side, so you got identifiers, representations. Files have exactly one representation and like usually one canonical identifier and, sub and subsequently you know, maybe, but like a, a, a resource has arbitrarily many uh, representations and then yeah, something like HTTP adds another dimension, which is, the, which is the method and the headers and the request payload. Um, there was something else too, I can't remember, but it's not important. Now, What's interesting about this is that since the, I mean, first of all, since, since you can have as many identifiers for a resource as you want, then the actual identifiers are not actually, you know, as long as one of them works, uh, you know, or well, I mean, all of them should work, but as long as, one, uh, you know, as, as, as long as you can get the thing, get at this little nugget in the middle that uh, will route you to the actual representation. And then of course, again, in HTTP, there's stuff like content negotiation. Of course, content negotiation has, I believe, four dimensions. So you've got type, language, and then two boring ones, which is um, char set and encoding. And that might look redundant, but encoding means compression, so uh, actual payload compression. It could be, you know, there's no reason why it couldn't mean anti-compression, like base 64. Character set is a little bit 
whatever these days, considering everything uses Unicode, but you know, sure, but type and language. And of course, you know, the, the, the spec is extensible, so you could add more of these, and there have been sort of proposals for more of these. Um, but type is actually, I mean, language is obviously interesting um, because you can have the same, you know, URL point to these can all be different languages, for example. Um, type is interesting, though, too, because you, rather than thinking in terms of, like, let's say you have a website and then you have, like, its concomitant API. Well, if your resources can vary by type, then the page and the API can be the same URL. And that, to me, is a very interesting proposition because what it means is that your sort of unitive delivery, you can start thinking of it in terms of just like a packet of resources. So you can sort of say, okay, you've got a little constellation and there's like little paths through the, you know, through the thing. Actually, I'm in, completely in the way of that. That was the exact wrong place to draw that. But, you know, you've got your sort of packet of resources I don't know, you got like paths that go through, maybe. Maybe that's a complete graph, doesn't matter. Um, you know, but you've got whatever. You've got your, that's, that was not a, <laughs> that was not a, a node. It was a path. Um, but uh, yeah, you have your nodes and you've got your whatever, process, you've got your structure here. And you can package that up and you can sort of bolt that on to whatever's existing already. And, uh, and, and then what you can sort of think of is you can just think of this as, as a deliverable. And because it varies by type, it's like it's content and API at the same time. Another aspect, though, too, uh, when thinking about thinking about resources, of course, is that resources are addressable by definition. So like a resource is, you know, where you go to get information. And so you can think about what are called composite documents, wherein a, uh, you know, so say you've got your, you know, you've got your page, which whatever, it's got your content in it, but uh, there's a thing called transclusion where, and I mean, the web already, you know, out of the box has very weak transclusion in the form of images, videos, iframes, that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, having a seamless transclusion that just plunks a chunk of markup in to, to where you want to put it enables you to then sort of reuse the, uh, the, the content. Um, that creates some complexity um, you know, people sort of argue like, well, you know, it's hard to make something, you know, without a context. And it's like, well, no, it's not one context. It's just multiple contexts. Uh, it's, so it's not that it's without context. It's that it has to be sort of tailored to be in multiple places at once. So that, you know, that, that makes it a little bit more complex. Uh, although if you can see the context at the same time, it's, it's, a, it's a lot easier to author for them. And then what ends up happening, though, is that if you think of, you start thinking in terms of resources and networks of resources, like just little chunks, packets, subgraphs, whatever you want to call them, of, of resources, then your, and then of course you think in terms of, of uh, transclusion as well, then you're targeting the sort of very specific. Uh, um, sort of reusable little nuggets of, of, of capability, content, functionality, whatever. And so that is kind of the way that I've been thinking in my practice for the last, I don't know, I mean, it's been a while. Uh, this is all in fielding rest paper. Uh, if you wanted to go look it up, it's a 200 page document because it's a PhD dissertation. It is absolutely worth the read. Don't read blog posts about rest, read the actual genuine article. 
but uh, yeah, it's uh, resource pilled, man. It's it's really a way the way to go. So I'm gonna finish my coffee.